Hello viewers, thank you for joining us on the first IG Live episode um, post Single Summit. IG Live was a time of great refreshing for me and I'm sure it was for all of you too. And um, we thank God for the provision to have IG Live, I mean, after Single Summit. We all went to Single Summit, we feasted, we ate, we were well fed. I learned so much, I took so much home from Single Summit and I'm sure you did too. So, um, like I said, IG Live is back, and um, I'm sure you guys are excited because I'm excited too. Um, from Single Summit, I was blessed. I learned a lot about the cross life. I mean, everybody would have, you know, taken one or two things home from uh, Single Summit about the cross. We used to see the cross as an ornament. We used to see the cross as something that was not appealing. But going to Single Summit, uh, coming back, I see that the cross is actually something to make my life better. I mean, um, okay, so as you, you already know, I'm Fola, your host for today, and today I have with me... Tosi! Yes, so Tosi, it's good to have you Thank here. You I mean, so I feel much. at home already Abby. just, you know, having you <laughs> by my side. Thank you so um, much. So how was Single Summit for you? Oh, Single Summit was a, a great blessing, really. How, you know, how pastors explained the, you know, the cross was just redefined to us. Yeah. You know how the, cr the cross is a life, mm -hmm. is a conversation. Mm -hmm. So it was a whole lot of redefinition for me. Yes, the yes. Was. I mean, we dropped wrong definitions. Yeah. You know, Pastor um, Dimeji started the meeting. I you know something that stuck out for me in Pastor Dimeji's um, message mm -hmm. was when he said that, you know, many of us in our generation, I mean Gen Z, mm -hmm. although we, we are Gen, Gen Gs, Gs. <laughs> yes, but, you know, many people spend time with TikTok, Instagram, mm -hmm. social media, and then he said that, you know, there's an excitement that mm -hmm. comes with being on these platforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like, oh, what's the next content? Mm -hmm. What's the next thing happening? What is trending? Mm -hmm. And all of that. But, you know, he also said that now, Gen G is this, you know, this different you tribe, know. yes, yeah. would learn to, like, draw pleasure and excitement from the things of God. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that for me. I'm tapping into that. I think one yeah. thing that stood out for me was Pastor Emeka's, uh, I think his first ministration, when mm -hmm. he talked about the technical know-how. Wow. You know, he was like, the cross is, uh, knowing the cross mm -hmm. is a technical know-how of how to knock out sin. And yes. to me, that was, that was, it. that was weighty to me. Yes, because, it was. You know, if, if we understand the cross, if we understand mm -hmm. the crucified life, we'll be able to know how to combat sin. So, yes. Yeah, so and, you know, this just, like, draws my mind back to um, what, you know, Reverend Ken said. Mm -hmm. You know, Reverend Ken was like, the cross is to cross your, your own way. way. Like you said, the cross mm -hmm. is to cross the way. way. Yes, so that just resonated with me. It means that I have my own ways, I have my own, you know, formations, mm -hmm. but the cross is now, you know, to counter those ways. And then, are you forgetting? Ah, exactly. So the cross, mm -hmm. he, he talked about how a man, like the way the Lord made man, mm -hmm. a man is a cross. A cross. Yes, so your body itself signifies a, a cross. cross. So, I mean, it just shows you that you were made for nothing else yeah, but the cross. But I think another thing that stood out for me was, you know, when um, Pastor Emeka said that the cross is a conversation of the Godhead. Mm, like yeah. how, like I, I was still trying to, you know, understand what he meant by mm -hmm. the, the Godhead, the cross. So it's yes. not Jesus that died for it's mm -hmm. not at least, mm -hmm. it should be just Jesus now that we can resonate the cross. Yes. But he said that's a conversation of, of the, the Godhead. Godhead. So wow, really I mean, single summit was beautiful, like no words, no like words. no words can sum up the blessings that, you know, we gleaned from single summit. And I'm sure you guys have been going back to the messages because if you are not, if you've not, I mean, you're you in the wrong, so go back to the messages. Then, Tosi, how was the panel session? Ah, so the panel session, really, it was like IG Life Life. Yes, IG Life <laughs> that was Pro how it Max. Was. Yes. yes, IG Life mm -hmm. Pro Max. Mm -hmm. You know, Pastor AK, Pastor Tilash, Pastor Leke, and Pastor Mike. Mm -hmm. You know, bringing those power forces together. I mean, it was really a huge blessing for me. It was like high budget fantastic yeah. for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And yeah, you know, um, it was it was beautiful for me because I mean I got to see into the mm. lives of pastors. Yeah. You know, pastors are pastors, but you know, they too showed us how that they are trying to live out mm. the life of the cross yeah. in their death. I mean, Pastor AK came from the angle of you know professional work, yeah, work, work environment. Mm. Pastor Leke came from academics. Mm. Pastor Tilash came from you know just growing up generally, generally and choosing the cross yeah. life you know over. Um, you know, the life that the world is pushing mm -hmm. at you. I mean, I was so blessed. It just made me see how that, you know, more than 
much more than what we are hearing. Mm. Like we have examples, examples that are doing, you know, yes. they are doing this life, they are living it, yes. with exp many experiences. Yes. And we cannot say that I don't have an example. Yes, I mean, it's, it's becoming yeah. more, tangible more tangible that the cross is not just, um, I mean, an insignia yeah. of who maybe the Christian faith, it is actually a yeah. life, yes. So today, um, Single Summit IG Live is back, back, back. We are ready to be blessed more. I mean, we thank God for this provision. Thanks to Pastor Emeka, the Single Summit convener. We are, you know, really grateful that, you know, we can have something more, you know, to keep the atmosphere of Single Summit. And today we'll be having a very, very, very special guest yes. with us. I mean, just, yes. <laughs> just, you know. Today we have Pastor, mm -mm, sorry. Daddy Tokwe Falaye, yes. aka Pastor, Pastor T. T. We love yes, we have Pastor T with Pastor us today. Tokwe, you're Pastor Tokwe, you're welcome. It's Thank a you. privilege and honor to have you Thank here. Thank you for having me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we have brought our cutleries, our plates, you know, our minds, our everything, you know, to be blessed. And we know that, you, yes, we're ready for it. So, Pastor Tokwe, you want to say hello to our Hello, device. everyone. Great to be here. I'm also here to learn somewhat. So, yeah. great to be here. Okay. How was Single Summit for you? How was it? Uh, single Summit was an encounter mm. for me. And, let me. and I'll try to just you know, be simple with it. Um, as a young minister mm. who's taught from the Bible many times you know, over the years, over and over, and you know, who know to a degree mm. some things about the cross, and also taught a little here and there over the years, um, teachings around the cross. Single Summit brought a whole new vista of experience. Mm. Wow. So for me, um, I left Single Summit this year, you know, thanking God for you know, God's servant, Pastor Emeka mm Eguchuku, -hmm. for not missing God. Because, you know, uh, ordinarily speaking, you don't give um, time to young people's meeting, mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the way of the cross. Mm -hmm. Because that in itself would turn some young people away, mm -hmm. you understand. But I think it was boldness and, you know, faithfulness to mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. for pastor, daddy, to have, you know, tagged that meeting, the way of the cross, the way the Lord put it in his heart. Then it opened a new, for those who are probably matured, who could, you know, peep into the spirit, it was for singles, young people, mm -hmm. but I'm not lying to you, it's like a turning point for a generation. Mm -hmm. You know, plus what we've, we, we heard in messages thought, you understand, something was opened, a help was opened for us. For me, my eyes were opened mm -hmm. all over again. From the very word go, when pastor started preaching, it's like I saw the cross all over the Bible, wow. all over our Christian work, until Jesus on the cross. Mm -hmm. So the cross has been there from Genesis, like our pastors taught us, until Jesus got to the cross. And different crosses, or just you know, different cross in different mm -hmm. dispensation of God's dealing you know, with his saints in Old Testament times, New Testament. So, you know, it was an encounter. It was an experience. And I thank God I didn't miss it. Mm -hmm. And that I didn't go casually. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I was, you know, personally very blessed mm -hmm. by this year's single so. summit. So, guys, everybody was blessed. I don't think you were not blessed. So put, put in your comment section what blessed you from this year's single summit. So we'll just delve in into today's question. questions. Okay. So, I mean, as Pastor Kwe was just recounting his experience, he already felt like Pastor Kwe was already blessing us. Yeah. That means we have a lot, you know, coming to us today. So, um, Pastor Kwe, hmm, this person even mentioned your name. So, yeah, I wanted to mention that we are taking questions from um, the panel session, mm -hmm. questions that were dropped, you know, by various persons. So, your questions will be answered today. So, this person, Pastor Kwe, this person directed the question at, well, the person mentioned your name. To say, Pastor Tokwe has mentioned it once that the reason many people have challenges with um, the works of the flesh is the absence, absence or paucity of God's word in them. So this person wants to know, how does one read or study the Bible for their personal spiritual development? And can you help with a guide and plan that works effectively? Okay. Um, 
well, from the basics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's good for young people to generally, you know, what works for you, first of all. Let's start from there, mm -hmm. from the basic. You know, what works for you, you know. What works for Brother A may not work for Brother B. You know, if you say do a general reading plan from the basics, you know, what will work for Brother C may not work for Sister D. Mm. So depending on their family, what they do, the kind of school they go to, some schools will not allow for some things. You know, some schools here in Nigeria now, for example, and, you know, they don't, they don't lean towards the Christian faith or the Muslim faith. They might not outwardly stop you, but they put things in place to make it difficult mm. for you to give attention to religious you know, things. Mm. You just want you to be academic, you understand? So you will now, you will now have to you know, uh, walk you know, around what works for you. So first things first is that you, know, you have to have a desire to know God's word. You know, the desire to, you know, grow in the things of God has to be there. If somebody puts a plan, whatever arrangement, and there is no desire, you know, it, it will be like pouring water on rock. So to pray for the Lord to stay a desire and to trust God to also adjust things around you for, to, you know, your desire to be expressed. Then secondly, you know, make time to read. The truth is that Satan is stealing the, the, the virtue of reading from a generation. You know, I think reading, personally, is part of human nature. God must have put uh, to read. You know, you know uh, you, because God started writing through men. You understand? Moses and many other things. So the ability to read is there, but Satan is stealing it. He's stealing it for things to watch. He's still in it for things we listen to. You understand? So everyone who wants to know God's word, thank God for by audio Bible. Thank you for thank God for other means of hearing and watching the Bible as it were. Make a plan to read. Paul told Timothy, give attention to reading until I come. Maybe one hour a day, maybe two hours a day, maybe 30 minutes a day. Anyone who wants to prosper in the things of God, knowledge-wise, God's word-wise, must first, the most basic thing is to read. Before spirit of wisdom and revelation will come, before understanding will come, before you begin to go into realms of understanding, you should be able to read. I mean, read Genesis, read Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus. Make an adventure of reading. You understand? Create time. I mean, create time, you know, go to parks, you know, for people who have that privilege, probably are in private university, go there without your phone, sit down and read. Hard copy recommended. You understand? I'm not lying to you because there's a whole lot of distractions through social media on the phone. So if really, really this hunger is strong and genuine, make time to read. You know, it's advisable for young people, 13, 15, 10, 9, wake up in the morning early enough. Your mind is still not so busy by the activities of the day. Maybe, you know, I remember back in the days, you understand, you know, I wake up 3 a.m., I'll pray one hour, I'll read my Bible one and a half hour. I'll make notes. I used to have almost a Ghana must go of notebooks that I made over a period of time. In six months, I've read my Bible, Genesis to Revelation, in six months. Not necessarily a plan. There's just something to read. And the Holy Ghost is at that level. So basic, make time to read. Just read. Read Esther, read Psalms, read Job, read you know, Samuel, read Matthew. Just read. Then for some, you may, there are some good you know, Bible reading plan that may help if you, know, you feel, I, I don't know where to read. There are quite a handful you can download online. You know, just read. The most important thing is read. Now, that's one. That's basic. Secondly, really, you know, it's good to yield to the leading of the Spirit, which is not exclusive to adults or teenagers. Even adolescents can be led. You understand? It's good to yield to the leading of the Spirit as to where to read yeah. and how to read. Mm -hmm. While basic just reading is, you know, for to wash your mind, is for to illuminate your mind with what is where. You know, sometimes in church these days, they said they quote a particular verse of Scripture, and every young person is using the search engine. Mm -hmm. You don't know, that's not good. 
that's not good. Even some of us who are, who are adults who are fighting it, because back in the days, anywhere you mention in the Bible, I know where it is, but it's not the same now. You understand? But I still can find my way here and there. But as for somebody, basic young people, you should be able to know when they say, Kotsi, whether it's in Samuel, it's in Nahum, or Badiah, you should know where it is. Just reading will do that. Then secondly, yielding to leading of the Spirit in your life would make it easy for the Spirit to open scriptures mm. to you mm. or me. Mm. You understand? A person who is not yielding to the leading of the Spirit on any issue or in any area of their life would almost be barren mm. and unfruitful in the knowledge of Jesus. Mm. Because there are, you know, there are certain knowledge of Jesus which are given in the path mm. that we are led in. If you're used to obeying the Lord, it tells you, you know, don't own your phone, for example. Maybe the Spirit of God just prompts you, don't own your phone. Going forward until 9 a.m. Mm-hmm. And you really, really check it. If he said it, he knows that there, even some things might look legit. But he said, don't own your phone until 9. I can assure you, every other thing that looks legit will not suffer. Mm-hmm. If they suffer, they will suffer and end up working up for your good. Now, if you follow that leading, you create an atmosphere wherein the voice of the Spirit can be loud. Do a statistics. Most young people wake up to their phone. Maybe 10, 1%, 2% percent wake up to their Bible. You understand? It's, they sleep, the last thing is the phone, the first thing. It's not an accusation, but if we really, really want to know the word, like Baba Egin knew the word. That's a standard for me. Like Daddy Egoke knows the word. Mommy Ellen, Pastor Emeka, Mommy Lillian, our pastors, the way they hold the word. If you want to know the word, then you must yield to the leading of the Spirit for you. Because he said, you know, the meek will he guide in judgment. So being meek there is ability to be led. So if he says, don't own your phone till nine, you understand? In obeying, you have shown your vulnerability to the Spirit in meekness. Then he can guide you in judgment. Then, you, you know, in that space, you might be amazed, maybe after one week, two weeks, or even the very day you start, an anointing can come on you that just begins to illuminate on John chapter 1. And the normal John chapter 1 that you've read and read, you understand, just makes sense. That inspiration comes, you understand. And, you know, that one that comes, you can't study into it. You can't even read into it. That's like a gift of the Spirit because you allowed him to lead you in a particular, you know, direction. So like Moses, you understand, he saw a burning bush, and he said, while he turned to see, God spoke to him. So leadings are God's condition for him to speak to us from the scripture. So if we must prosper in our knowledge of the Bible, we should trust God to yield to leadings. Major leadings, minor leadings, you understand, leading is leading. So we do well. A person will do well in the knowledge of God when they yield to leading. Listening to Egan, for example, you find a lot of leading around this life. A lot, like one, one example, one time, though not for the word of God, you know, the Lord led him to give his, you know, one family, one Christmas time, he didn't have money to take care of his family. He went to preach somewhere, and they gave him an offering, and he was like, I'm going to buy a gift for Ken, Ken Jr. and my wife. I didn't have any money, but yeah, there's an, an offering came. And while he was excited, wanting to go to the you know, store to buy Christmas gifts for his family, the Lord said, give that money out to another minister. And he, was, he struggled with it, but the Lord said, give it. He said, how would I take care of my family? Give it. He gave it. Came back home. You know, explained himself somewhat to them, and we moved on. They didn't die for that Christmas. Some months later, he went to minister somewhere, and someone, I think, you know, you know, you know had a particular health condition, very terminal health condition, was going to die. And they called him. He went there, and you understand, you know, when he got there, he prayed, and the person got healed instantly. Then the Spirit of God spoke to him. He said, you know why I could use you like this? He said, because you obeyed me last Christmas. He said, if you didn't obey me, he said, this anointing, this grace wouldn't come on you. So that obedience brought something to him. It helped somebody, but I can assure you it opened doors in the Spirit to him. So it's good to know that our obedience cannot be separated from our understanding. Show me a man who has good understanding of God's word. 
I will show you a man who has learned to yield to the leading of the Spirit to a good degree. Obedience is another bottle of, you know, kettle of fish. But, you know, for, to understand scriptures at certain level, we must obey. So what my advice and counsel to that brother is, read the Bible, flat, you know, just read. Whether you understand or not, read. Just read in the train, read in the bus, read on the plane, read while you're sitting and, and waiting for your lecturer to come in class, read before you sleep, read while you wake up, read after praying, just read, you understand? Then obey God. When those burdens come, don't play with them. Because if you don't yield to that burden while you are obeying God, an anointing comes for efficiency. You don't yield to it, it will lift. When it lifts, you discover the things that it looks like if we're coming, you won't find them. So these are two levels of you know, interacting. There are more, but basic for youth, two levels of interacting with God's word. That will Let me quickly add this also. Listening to messages. When you listen to messages, you, you will now see boundaries. You know, of how you, sometimes you're listening to a minister, maybe Pastor Maker, you just say something about the cross. And you know, back then, the way I would do it, I'd be like, cross, go and read on the cross. I used to have my whole diaries. Then when I get back home, I'll just open it and start, maybe, you know, this, I said, go and read, you understand? Study Manora, you understand? You know, you heard that, maybe the minister mentioned it, you know, topical search, you understand? You just go and you search it out. Where did it, was it first mentioned? You know, say, you know, what does it mean in the Old Testament? What does it mean? Those things, you are storing things inside that would help your mind be a Bible mind, be a revelational mind, a God's knowledge mind, as it were. You know, young people, I feel like some of us, maybe not all, we read the Bible. Is it possible for somebody to read the Bible, but yet they don't, you know, obey the leading of the Spirit? Are there repercussions like, okay, I'm reading my Bible, but my leading is in zero, zero? Is it possible? Yes, it's possible that I'm reading, you know, scriptures, but I'm not obeying. Mm -hmm. I think you know. <laughs> it's possible. We all you understand, you know, even, you know, sometimes we have understanding, but we really, you know, don't yield in obeying the voice of the Spirit that comes after. So, as per, is it possible? Yes. Repercussions, you understand, you know, for every disobedience, there's always, uh, I don't want to say it so that I won't look like if maybe I'm, you know, preaching the law of Moses, as it were. When we don't obey, we don't live. Mm. We don't live. Opportunities to become more like Christ. Yeah. An opportunity, like Pastor Demeji taught, to tap into the grace life, mm. we lose it. There are many instructions in the Bible. You understand? For example, don't lie. Mm. Lie not one to another. Ephesians chapter 4 is in the Bible. Mm. You, you can pick it up. By reading, be like, don't lie. And you do lie. Maybe I exaggerate, I lie, and you stop doing it. It's good. Mm. You understand? But there's a degree to which you can't do it without grace. Okay. There are certain things you may be able to be like, okay, I don't want to lie again. You know, certain things. But there are certain lies yeah, that like you I just, you, no, you, sometimes you even try. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let me try. But if I, you err, or let mm. me give one very evil speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Evil speaking. Wow. You understand? But when the Spirit of God now mm. comes wow. in a season and says, don't speak evil, it always comes with grace. Mm. You see, that instruction is if it is the Holy Spirit speaking to your spirit that don't speak evil, it's because in that season, that's what God is doing. Mm -hmm. It's not just you wanting not to speak evil. It is God wanting to help you to stop speaking evil. So if he comes and says, don't speak evil, there is grace. He will put grace in your heart. He will put the atmosphere of not speaking evil. He will create the scenario that will even reveal the amount of evil speaking that is inside of you. And it will be there to comfort you. You will just discover it's not of works. Mm. And that's what Pastor Dimeji meant by you understand, the life of grace. Mm. Is that without grace, you really, really can't live the cross life. So it's a cross life not to speak evil. Mm. But you cannot do it by your own energy. Mm. You will need the Spirit of God to instruct. So if he instructs and I don't obey, I lose the opportunity to trap more grace to take in more grace, to own more grace, mm. to behave more like Christ through the cross path. Wow. Wow. So that's one repercussion. Thank you yes. so much, Pastor Sophie. Okay. Uh, moving on to the next question. How do I develop spiritual hunger just as our parents in the Lord who did so from their youth? Mm. We have our mommies, our daddies. You know, they give us experiences, what they went through. It just feels like 
we would not have experiences yes. like that. Yes. You know, it feels like our generation is just dry. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So how how do we? Can I? Can, okay, let me use natural no, examples. You know, is to ask growing up, how do we develop natural hunger? How can I? Uh, maybe, I think it does maybe. came naturally. <laughs> it came naturally. Mm -hmm. It's part of our being. Mm. Even a child, you don't train a child to be hungry. Mm. Mm. A child is instinctive yes. for a child to be hungry. Mm. When there is no food in the stomach, nerves, enzymes send message to the brain, and instruction comes both from the nervous system mm -hmm. and the endocrine system pushes information mm -hmm. down that you are hungry and okay. you begin to react to it. So it's instinctive. Mm -hmm. Now, spiritual hunger is spiritually instinctual. Wow. It's spiritually instinctive. So really, mm -hmm. every believer who's born again, you know, our spirit with our, our spirit is not hungry because he's a new man. Yeah. But our spirit, you know, what the brain does to the body to send information that you are hungry. The spirit, you know, stares our soul. The spirit stares our, you know, our, our mind, our heart. You understand? It, it generates a sense of spiritual lack mm. to our soul for us to know we are hungry. And how do we, does it do it? You see yourself proud. Sometimes it might not be the Holy Ghost. Is your own spirit. You just, you just see a need for humility. You see a need for lowliness. You see a need for meekness. It's an instinct that your spirit is you know, bulging, prompting on your soul. So for us, it's not an issue of that maybe, you know, what do we do to be hungry? It's what do we do not to kill our hunger? Because what Satan has done is, is put things around us, young people, young folks in our generation, to kill our hunger. Social media, sorry to say again, you understand, you know, it's full of things to kill our hunger. One of the ministers said, he said, you don't know, you know, all of a sudden you spent four hours on social media. So you, you know, many of us can bear witness. Sometimes you have a prompting to read your Bible. You just have a prompting to read your Bible. You wake up in the morning and you just say, let me check my phone, and you are there for another two hours. So say, I'm late to work, I'm late to work, and that's the trend. So you understand? So we, the question is not how do we generate mm. hunger, the, because it's mm. instinctive. Mm. The Lord can impart hunger, because he's the head. Mm. And if Jesus would stay hunger in us, he won't jump on us. He would do it by the Holy Spirit, through our spirit. Mm. Then our spirit, in, if the Spirit of God is not even doing anything, you know, to generate hunger. Our spirit, because that's who we are. Yes, you understand? And the spirit is the man. The soul is the organ of the spirit. The soul is the belly. You know, it's from our physical belly. Message is sent to our brain. And brain reacts mm -hmm. by saying that you are hungry. Yeah. So the soul is the belly that keeps the things of the man. So the spirit stares us from our inside. And you know, you're, you, you just know you need luck. You see somebody who is humble. You see somebody who is meek as a sister. You see somebody who is beautiful, yet she's lowly. She, she doesn't see anything in her beauty. She just wants to love God, submit to God, scrub the floor, wash toilets. Your spirit uses that to tell you something. You are proud. You need to come down. You understand? You need to come for meeting. You, know, you, with, with, you don't have anything, and this person has everything and is pursuing God. Now, that's hunger. You come, you are sober. But by the time you go out, some things eat it up. Eat it up. So the thing is, we need to do an inventory. Mm. What are the things? Eating oh up our God. hunger. Wow. Sometimes we leave meetings like single summit with resolutions. <laughs> I'll read my Bible. <laughs> you understand? I'll pray. You know, oh, sincerely, man. you understand? Fast forward, seven days down the line, a few moments <laughs> later, <laughs> you understand? <laughs> you know, you just find that same person is, has watched all the movies, yes, knows, and, you know, then that hunger wins. Wow. Then another time, another big meeting, and the person is sober, is contrite, and wants God, and cries, mm -hmm. and God really comes, mm -hmm. tears down all the web of, you know, on, you know not being hungry, yes, not sir. being thirsty, not wanting God. God tears it down. Oh. Angels fight, push away evil spirits that becloud our atmosphere. Then we go again, and we nose dive into things that now suffocates the mm -hmm. hunger. So the thing is, Let's do an inventory. Young people, let's do an inventory. What are the things that eats my hunger? What are, like somebody who eats before he comes home. Mm. He has eaten. Mm -hmm. He's hungry. Brand mama put eat. He wow. now comes home. They now say there is food. He said, I don't know why I'm not hungry. You are confusing the person at home. Mm. 
because the person feels like all things being equal, you should she be hungry. hungry. But the truth is that you've been fed. Mm. So what Satan does mm. is that he feeds he us. Wow. He feeds us. So when we get to the things of God, no energy. Wow. He feeds us with vomit. Mm. We are falsely satisfied. Our mind, I'm also a young person, you understand? You know, I've been time seasons past of my life many years ago. Mind can be so rocked, walked up. It's busy. Yes, it's busy with movies. It's busy with fields. It's busy with immoral stuff. You understand? When you pick the Bible, you are, you are, you are joking because it's like a locked door. Because there are things like, let me use Pastor Tell you, like worms yes. crossing from one side of the mind to the other. You can't make any sense of it. Anointing can't stay. Wow. So is to make an inventory and be deliberate. Can I say this? Be deliberate. Mm. You understand? Be deliberate. You have to be hard on yourself. Mm. Consecration wise. You have to be hard on yourself. I have to put this aside. Mm. I have to put this aside. Because why? I want to retain my hunger. We can pray for hunger. Jesus can add to it. But when he adds to it, we may still lose it. So let's do an inventory. I take away this. I take away this. And if you feel taking it away practically, maybe you do six hours social media, which most young people do you know, daily. You understand? Yeah. You know, cut it down. Begin to cut it down. Be deliberate. You can't eat your cake and have it. Mm. You understand? Be deliberate. Sometimes some of us who are ministers and our parents, when there is grace, you can stay on the Bible for hours. Mm. I, I don't want to say things that will make it look like one is one spooky thing. You can stay on God's word for hours, not because you have strength, because there is grace. Mm. You know how to protect your hunger. Sometimes I just know I have to drop my phone now. I just drop it. I just know. If I go beyond this, then I'll be, I will feel like if I'm leaking. Mm. You leak out grace. Wow. You say, let us give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Lest at any time we should let them sleep. That's King James. The original Hebrew ending is lest at any time we should run out as leaking vessels. Mm -hmm. So we can leak out hunger. Wow. So guide the hunger. Wow. Guide the test. Guide your consecration. Wow. Spiritual consecration is one of the things that helps us keep our hunger. Mm. You come for meeting, you are just in the spirit already mm. because you le you've learned how to keep your hunger. So wherever you are, touch yourself. Say, I would learn to keep my hunger. I learn to, to keep, keep my, my hunger. hunger. I keep my hunger. I keep my thirst. Yeah. So I'm the one who, you know, while the Lord generates it, or my spirit instinctively mm. generates it. I should learn to keep it. I should not let the devil eat mm. my hunger. One of the things he steals is spiritual hunger, mm. spiritual test. And if you are without hunger, test two weeks, one month, you begin to be spiritually delus mm. deluded. Mm. You see some Christians, they are like confused. Mm. You understand? It's like somebody who's not eating, no glucose for one mm. month. Some Christians are without spiritual glucose mm. that is in the, in the word of God. So you see them, they are, they are famished. They, they, are, they are not okay spiritually. May we not be like Amen. that. And in any way we are like that, let's begin to trust the Lord to retrain ourselves. Retrain ourselves because we are a world generation. Thank you so much, Pastor. You know, I believe that the Lord is raising you know, young people who are brave. And the Lord really wants to work on you know, young people in this generation. The Lord wants to make us weighty. The Lord wants to make us, you know, how we look up to our you know, parents in the Lord. The Lord wants to make us have substance mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, what Pastor Tokwe has just said now. I mean, I'm, I'm sober already, Pastor Tokwe. <laughs> thank you very <laughs> much, sir. So, so I mean, this is like a call to us, you know, mm -hmm. don't unwind mm -hmm. with social media, with mm -hmm. movies. Sometimes you might just have to, you might just be that extra push you know, mm -hmm. to gather more grace. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is bringing grace. So don't, don't turn away and say, oh, I'll read my Bible later. Or let me just quickly do this. Or let me just quickly do that. Let me just quickly check you know, that status update. It might just be your, your opportunity to tap into the grace of God. So, Pastor Kwe, thank you so much for that. Uh, I mean, that was very insightful, sir. Okay, so on to our next question. Um, so, someone wants to know, from my understanding of the cross and what it signifies, all I can think of is suffering. This is compelling me to run for my dear life. So how can I convince my soul to remain following the Lord no matter how difficult it is? Okay. Um, that's to that person. <laughs> okay. Well, I love one thing about single summits this year. The Lord um, demystified the cross. Of course, let me use 
this word Likut, it says no pain, no, no gain. gain. The cross, you know, the way of the cross, the life of the cross, is a life that has come to deal with another life, mm -hmm. which we will not, you know, uh, joyfully want to let go, mm -hmm. because it's a life we have used in pleasure. It's a life, though sold to us, you know, in blindness, we're blind. Satan blinded man, then he began to, in blindness, sell things and push things down our throat. So the life of the cross, yes, to be frank, um, I don't think it can be sugar-coated. It's a life of suffering. And I've used my hand, you know, in quote. You understand? It's not suffering the way Satan has defined it. Naturally speaking, in the world, you can't become anything without suffering for that thing. Naturally speaking, you know, what's your profession, ma? I'm an enrollment officer. Enrollment officer. So, what did you study in school? Mass communication. Mass communication. Now, you know, there is no way you can become. You would have become an enrollment officer without the suffering. Mm -hmm. the, training the training is the suffering. Yeah. You know, Bible will not, you know, uh, because to us, to be appealing, now use languages that might sound appealing. You understand? No. You understand? You know, I did a little of law while I was in pastoral university some, and I know the whole training is suffering. Mm. The waking up early to be in lecture very early in the morning. You understand? The volumes of books. For somebody who is in probably the last session was in secondary school, and the next session, there you are in the university reading books that are scary. Mm. You understand? And library, small. Not enough for all of us guys who get there and hide the book. Some people will steal the book mm. so that other people won't get it. Now, all of those were not easy on our physical flesh, on our yes, physical sir. mind. Yes, and people went through it. People were falling sick. People break down. People were hospitalized just because they are going through school. We don't call it suffering, do we? No, we don't. We just see it as going to school. They are disciplining you. They are training you. You understand? It's good as young people for us to imbibe that same mind and that same sense with regards to the cross. Mm. It's a way. I like the theme of this year. It's a way of the cross or a way of life that is meant to retrain us to become like Jesus did. Now, looking at our standard, our Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, our goal, our dream, mm. we love what he has become. Even reading through the scriptures, because his life looked that, that, except for the last three days, you understand? He, he was suffering practically every season of yeah. his life. But he lived a normal life. He lived a normal life. So there's nothing to run away from. You run away from it now, you regret forever. Mm -hmm. You understand? So is it, you know, is, it, you know, is it a life of suffering? Yes. You know, is a life of uh, discomfort, you understand? As a result of the Spirit of God making me drop certain standards in leading, demanding it from me, and me picking up other standards. Yes. They can't, there's no other way to say it. You know, we lay down our lives mm. to pick up the life of Christ. That suffering is graceful. Mm. They don't, they're not just telling you, okay, for example, come and submit to spiritual authority, because let me use that for example. Mm. Submit to spiritual authority without grace for it. Mm. It's not the way Satan paints it. It's not the way those who preach, you know, you know, you know, that, you know, maybe when you preach the way of the cross, you are preaching works. It's not the way they preach it. I submit to spiritual authority. I know my flesh doesn't want to somewhere, but it is graceful. Mm. It is graceful. Is it easy? No. Mm. Let me give one example. I remember years ago I had, you know, an invitation to come minister. You know, I used to minister in many places. Very recently, in the last couple of four or five years, it's cut down. But there is this particular time I was invited to a private university, very big private university, you understand? And I was excited. I've gone to different public universities, government <laughs> universities, different parts of the country, and I was like, I'd like to know what it feels like, you understand? So they've invited me, face on the poster, they sent me poster, they keep updating me, you know, you are receiving you, we're looking forward to receiving you, we're looking forward. Yeah. So I was so excited. Just one day mm. to the meeting, I just got a call from Pastor Emeka. He was telling me about we're having a meeting, you understand? I said, no. I said, no, I have a meeting. As a matter of fact, you are the one who introduced me yes, to the people. Mm -hmm. And they've been planning this meeting for months. Mm -hmm. Pastor just said, 
Somebody else will go. And he just, oh my God, oh my God. It's like a volcano. I was like, I have planned, oh, you know, you know, but I had to fight. Mm. Now, being in that meeting, pastor's meeting, you understand, there were wars going on in my mind. You understand? And pastor should you know, understand, you know, somebody else can, you know, can't I always get the feedback? You understand? I'm talking like maybe five, six years ago. Yeah. You understand? But I had to war and war. Now, you know, that worrying is suffering. Mm. But there's grace for it. Yes, With, if I, I definitely, I can't even bring myself there. I can't tell myself I'm going, then I now counsel it by myself. I can't. But the Lord made grace available for it. It's suffering. There's no other name to call it. Yes, There's no other way to describe it. No other adjective. It's suffering. It's laying down my life. But you see, the beautiful thing is that it farmed me up. It's made me a better person. So the life of the cross is suffering. And that suffering is meant to correct our nature, mm. correct our value system. Over the years, my value system has now changed. Now, if pastor didn't, wasn't used of the Lord, then I didn't see it as used of the Lord. Yes. But later I saw it as used of the Lord to you know, correct that thing that wants to minister, you understand? And there's nothing wrong with going because pastor is the one that introduced me to them. If he didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to cope with reverend. Mm. Because coming to reverend... It's a different case of fish. Because daddy just said, you're following me. You I think I call you in the morning. And he's training. Mm. Beautiful training. Because Jesus will do more. Mm. To any person. Jesus takes everything. A mm. man takes more. By the, and God will lead them to take small, instruct you small. You understand? Daddy will just I call you in the morning. You are, we are traveling to Ibadan today. Wow. I just be like, <laughs> what else? I'm not aware. I've not washed my clothes. I've not, you understand? So you, you know, so training for training. Wow. And we become better. Mm. So it's suffering, my brother. You understand? Don't mm. run away. Yeah. Don't run away. Of course, the Lord won't do this to you mm. at your level of growth. But he will do some things. Mm. We live for Jesus. Yeah. He said, if one died for all, then all were dead. And those who, you understand, who are now alive as a result of the one that died, should not live unto themselves, but unto him that died for them. So the life of the cross is you learning how to lay down your own life to live the life of Jesus. The purpose of Jesus, the will of Jesus, and that suffering is a joint suffering. Everyone who must become like Jesus must share in that suffering. Yes. You shouldn't. You shouldn't, actually. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Sokway. I hope whoever dropped this question has been greatly encouraged. So we'll be going on a very short break. We'll be back. So don't leave your streaming devices. We'll be back to you. Thank you. Every day by day, wake up in the morning, pray. Steady killing flesh by faith. What it be like, play like play. Me, I go get God one day. Because I know the way. Lay down my life on the line so I can get this name. Put in my life at stake. If not, what you go take? Cause it's an honor to be slain by you So my back on the world, I'm a face to you For the wisdom of God, I'm a active fool If I lose it's gain, if all I have is you If all I have is you, no issue If you pay me, claim my eye with tissue Deny myself, carry my cross, follow you Lose my life as long as I find you Carry my cross forward from day to day Carry my cross forward from day to day Mark of Christ on my back, I know day I shame Crucify life, not the way, not the way, not the way Again. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, it's the power of God to salvation. I'm crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ that lives in me, faith of the Son in me. To my family, my G -G -G. my way to the slaughter, my step, peep, peep, like a lamb to the share, I'm your need to be. Hurry no more, me, you hip, peep, peep, hip, peep, peep, no more. Lost of the flesh, no more. Lost of the eyes, no more. The pride of life, no more. Living for desires and the standard of the world, no more.
that you find worthy to die your death, great love and mercy. High praise, would you come and slay me? Slay me into glory. If Jesus died, then I must die to lose the gain of the small and the desires too. If the took him, I found nothing in him. I must do all the works to have nothing on his seat. This way, no share of fashion if we make less. Carry my cross and my shame with fiendness. See, I must die the death to gain the light to see some ghosts from where the crown belongs. Carry my cross for head from day to day. Scott said, I learned the cross is made for man and man for the cross. Very yeah, true. Very true. Um, okay, here by May, you said, emphasis on without your phone. And I think the part where Pastor Tucker was so talking, about talking about reading, reading your Bible. Bible. Um, Toby Bank said, yield to the leading of the Spirit. Mm. Um, Elizabeth Scott said, being meek is the ability to be led. Um, the other person, okay. Prevailed, she does. They said our obedience cannot be separated from our understanding of the world. I, I like can that see you guys are following. Really following. <laughs> yes. really following us. Yes. Um, okay, let me take one more comment. The life of the cross is you laying down your own life to learn how to live the life of Jesus. Prevailer, she does. They said that. So I think Word. our audience are really following us. Words. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, uh, you people are. You're doing well. You're doing well. Okay, so um, we'll be going right into our questions. Don't lose your guard. Don't, you know, don't um, dwindle now into other things because, you know, we're not done yet. So, Pastor Quet, welcome back. And it's been, it's been amazing. It's been a blessing having you here. Thank you. Man. So, the next question, I'm sure this question will interest, you know, many of you or many people. I mean, yes, because, you know, it just feels like, oh, this is like, yeah. But well, let me just go right into the question, okay. sir. How does one handle emotional attachment towards a brother or sister with whom one has going to become good friends? Yes. And then this person also wants to know, is it always a case of lust? Okay. Um, how do, does one handle um, 
a case of emotional attachment, attachment with a brother or a sister, as the case may be, that one has you know, grown to be fond with, you understand? Um, first of all, man, let your pastor know. Because many people, in trying to handle it, mishandle it. You understand? Sometimes it may be a case of you having an attraction. When I say you now, I'm the person who's asking this question, and many people may have been in that mode or are in that mode. You're having an attraction, you know, to that person, but the person doesn't have any attraction. You understand? So tell your pastor. You understand? All things being equal, your pastor will give you based because you can't. So I'll give an hypothetical scenario around this, but there are cases wherein there are other. For example, what if the person is working with you in the same office? Your brethren, quite all right, serve in the same department in church, now work in the same office, you know, in the bank. And here you are, you know, you go home together, probably he picks you or she picks you, and you're always talking. You understand? Now there is an emotional attachments, you understand? I just give a scenario. That could be the case, you understand? So generally speaking, talk to your pastor. Your immediate pastor, you know, let's say you're in university, you have pastors in school. If you're in church, you understand, you know, you have pastor in church, in New and Living Way, and because no single summit span beyond New and Living Way, wherever you are, you understand, talk to the pastor you are accountable to. You understand? Yes. That's the first thing to do. So based on the peculiarity of that, your case, then your pastor can give you clear-cut counsel. But let me give general counsel. Now, if, if you say two-way thing is dangerous, mm. you understand? You are emotionally attached to the brother, and he is also emotionally attached to you. The two of you may make mistake if, you know, you don't. So if you share different pastors, talk to your pastors. You understand? And you know, you know, I want to believe your pastor will say, you know, reduce the, the communication. It's LD. You understand? There's this Yoruba saying that says, whatsoever you're not going to eat, <laughs> there's no smelly. point smelling it. Yes, you understand? You know, you're not in the courtship with the person. It's not like if the Lord is leading you. And even if the Lord were to be leading you, that circumstance would blow your judgment. Yeah. Then any true pastor would not be quick to want to give a yes or take it serious, as it were. You understand? We want, let there be a separation so that we'll be able to separate your emotion from your spiritual perception in picking that maybe this is the person. So first things first, tell your pastor. Your, your pastor will most likely, amongst other things, say separate from this person. Now, somebody will be like, okay, we're in the same department in church. You know, the two of us are the ones who are in charge of projection. <laughs> Apologies to folks in projection, just an example, you understand? And we are in the same bank. Now, let's say if you are in the same bank, you can't say, go and tell HR, remove my seat. Because HR will ask, what's Why? going on? You understand? you understand? But at least outside of that setting, if your workplace allows it, you can say, okay, I just feel I'll be more comfortable. I just would like to, you know, if it allows without creating a controversy, good. But if it doesn't, you understand? You reduce the talking, particularly for the sister. I like to always say that. Even though we also for the brother, but for the sister, who most times are taken advantage of. Yeah. It doesn't mean some brothers are not taken advantage of, but most times, sisters are more vulnerable. You know, you cut down the calls. I'll tell sisters, I've seen cases like that. You tell the brother, look, don't, be, don't even go around it. Even though sometimes sisters, when you counsel them, they will not go and do it that way. Mm. Tell him, my emotions are getting unduly, you understand, stared mm. the more we talk, you understand. I'd like to cut down on it. I've spoken to my pastor, you know, Pastor Tokwe, Pastor TJ, Pastor T. Lash, and they said we should reduce. Because if you don't say so, no, he will keep yeah, coming after you. Yeah, yeah. And he'll be wondering what's wrong with you, you know, why are you not, you know, flowing, you know, mm. what's wrong with you. But you say my pastor, sometimes my pastor breaks the whole thing. Just say, and particularly if you have a strong pastor, maybe like Pastor Leakey, you know, yes. without mercy. You know, he say, my pastor, the guy just looks at you, you understand, his test message, you are, but like side by side, he's always sending you a test message, can you give me your Bible? <laughs> because why, he's afraid, you know, so that's, that's beautiful. Talk to your pastor, and most likely, your pastor would say, cut down on the, on the, you know, the communication, you understand? 
cutting down the communication, particularly with that intent, and you make it known to him, you understand, would reduce the emotional attachment. It will reduce the stare of the emotions that is occurred. Like, there's this particular case I can remember. For you to know, because some sisters will feel like, even brothers will feel like, what if he's the one? You understand? Now, if he is the one, all things, I want to be fair now, if he is the one, I can assure you the Lord will make it work. Yeah. If you honor your, the Lord in your pastor, mm. in eating that counsel, mm. that will keep you pure, mm. that will keep you focused mm. and not distracted. Mm. This brother and this sister, they were so close. They felt, you understand, that's the story of many people mm. in our midst. Mm. They were so close, they, were, they felt they, they were meant for each other. But they went to talk to their pastor, a, 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 a pastor's wife. And the pastor's wife told them, he said, you know, they should, you understand, you know, separate themselves. You go your way, you go your way. Not like they shouldn't greet, you shouldn't talk, but that communication, 11 p.m. in the night, 1 p.m., have you watched this movie? You understand? Have you listened to this message? You get to you understand? You know, this message that Pastor Tosi thought, let's listen to it together. Which minute are you on? You know, say, cut it down. And they cut it down, you know, on the, because two of them spoke to me, you understand, because they are now married, you understand. They cut it down to the point wherein they now felt like, this is that felt like, it's like I'm losing this guy. And for him, it was like, it's like, I'm losing this lady. Then eventually, the sister was firm enough to say, if I will lose him, let me lose him. But I just want to make sure I don't lose the Lord. Yeah. You understand? And they obeyed. They would see themselves in a meeting and greet. They would have been so emotionally attached before. Wow. Just greet. In honor of the Lord, who was in their pastor's wow. wife. You understand? Then later, the Lord brought them back. So when they now went to pastor, that I feel, in, even though we've been close, I feel in my spirit, this is my husband. I feel this is my wife. Pastor Maker said they should sit down, spoke to them, you understand? And said, if convinced, this is it. So that's, you know, separation. It may not be, it may not be marriage, it may just be lost. Yeah. In some cases, most cases, it is lost. Even the one that the Lord may be in, it may also be lost at that time. Because what is foiling it wasn't leading for this case. It was just liking, loving, you understand? But later on, when they did the right thing, their judgments were clear enough, and they were able to see the Lord, that the Lord would have them be as husband and wife. But Satan ahead of time wanted to pollute. You know, such, times, such things happen. People that the Lord intend to be husband and wife, they get so unholily un entangled that they now pollute their hearts. They use lust that later on, even when the Lord tells them, this is your wife, they say, God, it can never be. Not this lady that is, you know, we, the two of us that done this thing. This can never be my wife. This can never be my husband. And before you know, such people, some cases, if God doesn't show mercy, might stay long before they get to marry. Because what, who they should have married, they messed up with it. You understand? So talk to your pastor. Then let there be a LD only gap that will allow the two of you to focus on the Lord without your emotions being tampered with. Is it every time that is lost? Most times, it may not be every time. Sometimes it's just that attachment between a man and a woman. It can happen to anybody. It can happen to a married man if he's not careful. You understand? You keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. Before you know, your emotion would be, at, you know, stead. You may be attached. You may have, you understand, you know, you know swings that are unhealthy and should not be mentioned. You understand? Yeah. That was, like, very... I feel like the crucified life, you know, it's, it touches every oh, area of our life. Every yes. area, even areas that are maybe don't Even feel areas of our emotions, mm -hmm, exactly. yes. The Lord is mindful Lord of that, it. so and he wants yes, to regulate that. And I feel like the crucified life. life, you know, teaches, like, it's teaching young people like mm. us how to, you know, um, enjoy godly relationships. Yes. Like, how, you know how, you know how, I don't want to explain myself. Like I, I relationship, guess even with the opposite yes. sex. Without yes. being attached. Yes, yes. purity. Yes. Purity. With any purity. With anybody. Can, I say, can I say this? Sorry, ma'am. Yes, you know, we live in a world where anything between a guy and a lady must end in sex. Mm. That's the world we live in. Yes, and sadly, it's so in church. Mm. Sadly. In many churches, once a brother and a sister sit together mm. and they are going home, and before the next thing, if you check Everybody what's going on in their mind, yes. is how you know in the long or short run they will sleep with each other. Yes. But that's outside. yeah, that outside is normal. But in the church mm. is abnormal. Yes. You understand? So without that crucified sense mm. 
as a sister, a brother is talking to you, you should, you know, when you begin to see the boundaries is beginning to cross, you understand, it gives you an, a hug that you are not comfortable with, it holds you in a particular way, you call his attention, you understand, you know, he might deny it, but you draw his attention to it. I, I, I appreciate the hug, but the way you help me, I'm not too comfortable with it, I'm sorry, please don't hold me like that again. It's not, you say, oh, you're, 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 you're dragging it. Yes. And there are people who argue, you can tell, it's pure. Yeah. You understand? So it's good to, you understand, when you discover discussions, talking is going out mm. of line. Mm. The other person may not have something, mm. but you are having something, correct it. Yeah. Correct it. And the guy calls you, just say, I'm a little busy. He too, if he is spiritual and he fears God, he will get a drink. And if you get a drink, don't make it look like the sister is now beefing me. She's not beefing you. She wants to be Christ. Yes, sir. Help her to be Christ. Yes, sir. And you too be Christ. Yes, sir. Everybody carry your cross. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's help one another to be Christ. Yes. Mm. So moving on to the next question. Is the way of the cross a life of subjective leading only? Mm. Because I know maybe objective leading, subjective leading, but this person asking, is it only subjective leading? No. Majorly, the Lord subjects, you understand, uh, you know, those who are in the path of the faith of the Son. Mm-hmm. Let me put it that way, mm-hmm. you understand, which, you know, you know, to a great degree, the life of the cross begins to be evident. Mm-hmm. So he subjects us. Mm-hmm. Now, subjective leading can be, the Lord can bring one subjective leading that can alter your direction for 10 years. Mm-hmm. One subject, it just subjects you to a process. You understand? And in that process, let's say, for example, the Lord tells somebody from Jigawa, mm. go follow your mom to Lagos for one conference. And the person is an hypothetical example. The person comes to Lagos. And while they came for Lagos, they say they came for convention. Mm. The intention of the Lord is that the Lord wants this person to stay in Pastor Tunji Adegoki's house. And you understand, you know, but the Lord didn't tell him. The Lord, if he tells him, he doesn't know any Pastor Tunji, he doesn't know any GFM, he just loves Jesus in Jigawa, in one church where the Holy Ghost moves, he's blessed, Jesus is good. And here he is, the Lord now brings him to Lagos with his mom. And while they came for convention, they met Pastor Emeka. Pastor Emeka, your message blessed me. Mommy Ellie, your message blessed me. Ah, and I discovered my son has been saying he wants to come to Unilag. Unilag, maybe I will let my son come to Unilag so that he will do this. And for you know, three months down the line, summarily, the son has gone, wrote jam, and now they said his name came for Unilag, and he's looking for a place to stay, to write post jam. And they now say, where would they stay? Pastor Emeka now called Pastor TJ. Let this brother stay in your house. <laughs> yes, and the brother, you know, just came excitedly. I will stay here, write jam, and oh, I will go to yeah. Unilag. And he writes jam, and things didn't work out. And the mom says, stay hey. in Lagos for some time. Hmm. You understand? And that's how he started staying in Pastor TJ's house. Of course, the first few months, he's wondering, what am I doing here? You know, wash Pastor TJ's car. You know, they go to market together. They come for IG life. You understand? <laughs> you know, they're there in the peaceful life. Pastor TJ is teaching, and he's there in Sunday service. And he's wondering, what kind of thing is this? You know, in the house, he's been subjected. Mm, yes, they didn't tell him. They didn't even, he doesn't even know he's being led. <laughs> but a process went over him. Now, inside of that subjective leading, there may be many objective leadings. You understand? So, you know, the, that whole arrangement is cross. Because he's being made to go a direction he doesn't want to go subjectively. But inside that subjective leading, there may be many objective leading. So, to answer the question directly, is the way of the cross or the life of the cross, is it only subjective leading? No. It's a mixture, a spirit blend of subjective and objective leading. The picture that comes to me is blending watermelon, banana, oh. and pineapple yeah. together to give a perfect mix. Mm. That's how the Holy Ghost brings leading. Wow. The Holy Ghost is a master of mixture mm. of leading. Mm. You can wow. put one leading, subjective, mm. objective, you understand, you know, you know, you, you can one time you hear it in your spirit, another time you see it in your dream. Mm. You know, all of it is to make sure a kind of man called Christ in Adamu that came from Jigawa is actualized. 
Ten years down the line, on his wedding day, he's saying, I want to thank God for my daddy, <laughs> Pastor Tudia, Degoke, and then my mommy. Yeah, that's, I remember when I came to their house ten years ago. Mm-hmm. I was stubborn. I troubled them. Mm-hmm. I troubled them, but, you know, but now today, you understand, Pastor TJ will be crying, cleaning his face, you understand, <laughs> Sister Yaki will be like, you understand, you understand, yes, he'll be like, thank God for this guy, you understand. But here he is, responsible man, he's married, a cross-bearer wow. for the kingdom. Wow. So he's a mixture of both subjective and objective leading. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor Tope. Thank you. Okay, so um, Tessie, do you want to go into the next question? Uh, I think you should take it. Okay. <laughs> so I, um, our next question is, is the cross beautiful or shameful or both? The cross is beautiful. Sure I have the person said, is the cross beautiful or, or shameful, shameful or, or both? both? The cross yeah. is beautiful. Let me start All from right, there. Sorry. The cross <laughs> is beautiful. Of course, if you look at the cross of Jesus, particularly if you've watched the passion of the Christ, mm. you understand, it seems shameful. Mm. You understand? Even Paul said it. To the world is foolishness. Mm-hmm. Anything that is foolish to the world is shameful. Anything that is not within the grasp of the world, particularly if it's Jesus, is shameful. The life of the cross to a carnal man, to an, you know, an unbeliever and a carnal Christian, it's a shameful life. It's a ridiculous life. Mm. It's a laughable life, wow. you understand? But it is the beautiful life. Wow. Anything that is of sin mm. and death of the devil is the shameful life. Mm. So it depends on who's looking. Mm. Yes. Just like it is said, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if the beholder of the life of the cross has seen death, hell, death, this world as the goggle of observing, they will see shame. They will see you know, disgrace, embarrassment. They will see suffering. They will see things that are... You understand? Shameful, so to speak. And every adjective in that basket, they used to qualify it. But if it is somebody who is walking the path of life, for example, humility is beautiful. How many times do people get irritated by people who are humble? I've been there before. You understand? Just because, you know, I'm back in the days in a Jagunle School of the Spirit, you know, the way the Lord subjected me, serving, doing things, running errands. One person looked at me one day. Oh, it, it, the thing that remained was for him to spit on me. He just felt, you understand, why would I reduce myself for what? She be head, I went to university. And I would be behaving like, boy, you understand? He was irritated. I didn't keep it from me. He was giving it to me. And some people were there. They, they just looked, you know. He just felt like this is hypocrisy. Mm. You understand? Why, why, why do this? You're a man. Why serve a woman? Why do this? Wow. To him, he's irritating. Yeah. You understand? You know, so, but to other people in that same setting, some of them looked at him and be like, we can't do this, but this is beautiful. Mm. You understand? I wish I can do this. So the cross... No believer mm. should open their mouth, except they are trying to balance, mm-hmm. explain from different sides. You say this, yes. the cross is, is shameful. It's obviously, from the natural point of yes. view, it's shameful. But the cross is beauty. It is where sin ended. It is where death ended. It is where Satan was destroyed. It's the most beautiful sight, even though with pain, even though with with, with agony of our Lord. And every time we are doing the life of the cross, if you've read the book of Rejoiner, when you see those, in those visions you saw, when believers are walking those paths, so they are with pain. Some of them, even God on the throne in a particular case was crying. He was crying because of people who were walking the path of the cross. But yet, he knew, God knew, angels were crying because he that sat on the throne cried. The Bible said all of them were crying. Wow. Because of people who were walking, they, they were dying, dying, laying down their lives. But that's beauty. You see, that is what generates aroma and pleasure. Paul said, we as sheep are led to the slaughter daily. So the cross is beautiful. Beautiful in the realm of the spirit. Beautiful to those who see with the eye of faith. Because meekness is pressed out through the cross. Lowliness, humility, not loving the world. You know, hating lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life is beautiful. It's a beautiful life to rust God's people. But it's a shameful life, 
you understand, from the natural point of view. So don't let us be intimidated. Let us embrace it. Embrace it in the bank, if you work in a bank. Everybody changes figure. Everybody does things. But you stand your ground and they, they give you that look of, you understand, you are a fool. Guy, sisters, stand your ground. Rather lose the job than lose your cross. Because the cross is a beautiful life. Shameful from those who are without, but beautiful to those of us who are um, within. I don't know why this reminds me of last year's single song. It's by me. Yes. You know how the cross, you know, Pastor just explained the mm-hmm. beauty mm-hmm. in the cross. Mm-hmm. You know, it's opening our eyes to see that there's, there's actually no shame in the cross mm-hmm. when you can see the beauty. Yes, I mean, so, the scripture just resonates again. I am not ashamed of the gospel, gospel of Christ. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow, well, Pastor Fred, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been, it's been a... A very, I mean, a time of refreshing. yes, I, I, I feel, feel so refreshed. I'm yes. refreshed myself. I am. Thank, Thank you so, so much, much, Pastor. Thank you. Okay, so. Can I say one thing? No, yes, definitely. yes. Okay, uh, yes, I want to say thank you to Daddy Eguchuku yes, for the theme of this year's single summit. If you ask me, I've been attending single summit from when I was single, I think, you understand? I think it should be up to 12 or 13 editions, so wow. that means it must have been because I'm just gonna be 11 years married some months now, you understand? I want to thank Daddy. This is the best single summit for me. I had an encounter. I mean, I had a formidable, lifelong, I saw a vision the last night where pastor was preaching. It grew from understanding, revelational understanding, and the last thing I saw Jesus on the cross. That broke me. That broke me. It was a tangible encounter. I want to thank Daddy. I want to thank Mommy for obeying God. For obeying God. For to give a generation the opportunity to serve God and find truth for us, even in this part, in this regard. We're grateful, sir. We're grateful, Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy. My generation is blessed. Very blessed. Yes. I mean, what better way to end, you know, today's episode? It's been amazing it's been insightful it's been a time of refreshing like we have said time and time and time again so and also um, thank you to our viewers for yes, following through yes. thank you for staying thank you yes. for sticking close thank you Thanks for so dropping much. comments and so telling much. us that you're with us and um, pastor Kwe, do you have anything to say to us so we go to you, so, to uh, the so audience. Was, uh, well, yes, let's make sure we we'll go back to the messages and relieve the moment. Yes, Great yeah. things the Lord did in sync. I think we can listen to mm. those. We should listen to those messages again and again. Great blessings the Lord brought down upon us. Thank you. So we don't mind if you can share yeah, yeah, the word of prayer. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, Amen. let the blessing of the cross that you brought upon us in single summit mm. through your servants, our parents, and our pastors. Lord, let it weigh more on us. Amen. Let the weight of those blessings in word, in doctrine, in spirit that came to the earth, Lord, let it increase upon Amen. us. Peradventure, if there be any person that has lost touch, of the blessings, of the grace, Lord, in your mercy, restore. Amen. Help us to hold to the reins of the blessings you have given Amen. until we become totally crucified Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, guys, Amen. that's a wrap for today. Thank you for staying true. See you next week on the next IG Live. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>